Hello, uh, it is a pleasure and honor for me to present at the fifth International Forum on Medical Innovation of Cell and Biotherapy. I want to sincerely thank the organizers for inviting me to this exciting forum. For the next 30 minutes, I would like to give the audience here an overview on how we use the stem cells in genomics for guiding physician medicine. Before I start, uh, here's my uh, disclosure statement. Now, as all of you know, uh, there's a, a significant interest in physician medicine in the US. This concept was first promoted by President Obama back in 2015. Much of this is made by possible and recent advances in next generation sequencing, bioinformatics, and big data. By understanding our genes, along with lifestyle and environment, the hope is that we can better predict which treatments might work best for us. Now, in my opinion, there are three key technologies that have now made precision medicine possible. The first technological breakthrough uh, is next generation sequencing, which has now become much cheaper with lower error rate and broader coverage and much faster turnaround time. For example, back in 2000, it cost $1 billion and over 13 years to get the DNA sequenced. Today, you can get the DNA sequenced for less than $1,000 and with a turnaround time of three to four weeks. The second technological breakthrough is the various types of genome editing technologies, starting first with the zinc finger nucleases, then Kalin, and then culminating with CRISPR-Cas9, which was first discovered by Emmanuel Champetier and Jennifer Dutner in 2011. Using these genetic scissors, Researchers can now change the DNA of animals, plants, and microorganisms with extremely high precision. In my opinion, the third technological breakthrough is human-induced pluripotent stem cell platform, which provides you with a test bed to validate human mutations and CRISPR editing of genetic variants. As you know, this technology was uh, pioneered by Dr. Shina Yamanaka around 2006. The process involves uh, taking patient's skin or blood transfecting the somatic cells with reprogramming factors such as ARC4, SOX2, KLF, and CMIC to deliver the almost equivalent of human embryonic stem cells that can both cell renew and are pluripotent. And just like human ear cells, uh, these human iPS cells can then be differentiated into any somatic cell types of interest, such as cardiomyocytes, neural cells, eyelid cells, or hematopoietic cells. This then allows you to characterize the disease phenotype identify molecular targets, and implement personalized medicine. With that as background, I want to give you some examples of how we use DNA sequencing, genome editing, and human iPS cells to answer key biological questions related to cardio cardiovascular medicine. So since I'm a clinical cardiologist by training, many of the examples that I will show is related to heart disease. So shown here is a schematic, re uh, different causes of heart diseases, which falls into three major buckets. The first bucket is primary cardiomyopathies, which could be genetic or uh, acquired. Next is secondary cardiomyopathies, which could include chemotherapy or radiation-induced uh, cardiotoxicity. The third bucket is the more common causes that, uh, that are likely polygenic, such as coronary artery disease, hypertension, and congenital heart disease. <clears throat> now, because... <clears throat> So over the past uh, 10 years, our lab has uh, generated the iPS cells for more than 1,500 patients with different uh, genetic background and also cardiovascular diseases. And then for these diverse patient populations, we can now generate their uh, patient-specific 2D micropattern uh, human cardiomyocytes, 3D human cardioorganoids, and also 3D uh, engineered uh, uh, heart tissues. I will now show you several examples of how we use iPS cells to understand the mechanisms of these diseases. Now, one example is familial hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, SCM. SCM affects about one in 500 people. This is one of the most common causes of sudden cardiac death in young adults. Clinically, the patients have left ventricular outflow tract obstruction and also cardiac arrhythmia. This is a diagnosis of exclusion when the athlete passes on the football field or basketball court. And then to date, more than 500 mutations have been identified across more than 30 genes. Now, about eight years ago, uh, we were referred a large family with familial hypertrophic cardiomyopathy by our heart failure cardiologist. The mother here I had SCM with symptoms of cardiac arrhythmia. Now, she has eight kids. The two oldest one already manifested hypertrophic cardiomyopathy phenotype, whereas kid number three and kid number eight 
are both genotype positive but phenotype negative, most likely because they were still young at that time. Through a whole series of experiments, we were able to show that this particular myosin heavy chain 7 mutation with alternating the histidine switch at codon 663 causes increase into cellular calcium, which leads to calcium handling defect and then cellular uh, arrhythmia. It also causes activation of the calcium neuron and fat signaling pathway, which leads to hypertrophic responses. Importantly, treatment with calcium channel blockers such as verapamil and beta blockers such as propanolol can be used to reverse both the cellular arrhythmia as well as the cellular hypertrophy. So as you can now start seeing how we use these patient-specific iPS cells as an in vitro platform for drug screening. In a more recent study, uh, we were referred by our electrophysiology colleagues, a large family cohort with Laman AC frame shift mutation that leads to early termination. Laman mutation accounts for about 10% of familiar dilated cardiomyopathy, so roughly one in 20,000 patients. Now for this particular family, many of the affected individuals had cardiomyopathy, atrial fibrillation, and atrial ventricular block, and eight of them died from sudden cardiac death. Using iPSL-derived cardiomyocytes, we confirmed that the Laman uh, mutation is indeed responsible for the cellular arrhythmia and also the impaired contractility. And then as shown in this uh, cartoon uh, on the right uh, 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 here, typically uh, the control healthy uh, cardiomyocytes, they have normal expression of the Laman protein, normal nuclear structure, and also normal uh, Laman-associated domain. However, patients with the Laman AC mutation have abnormal nuclear structure that causes increased open chromatin in the Laman associated domains instead. This then leads to activation of genes that should have been silenced in otherwise healthy conditions. Uh, using RNA seq and ataxy, we next identify PDGF signaling pathway as one of those abnormally activated genes in the Laman uh, mutation cardiomyocytes compared to the control uh, cardiomyocytes. And then importantly, uh, we also show that blocking the PDGF uh, pathway with FDA-approved tyrosine kinase inhibitors, such as quinolalib and sunitinib, a very low dosage, can rescue the abnormal phenotype of these uh, mutant uh, cardiomyocytes. Now, besides classic uh, genetic mutations, we are also interested in studying the impacts of single nucleotide polymorphism, or SNPs. In this case here, we focus on the SNP for aldehyde dehydrogenase, which is one of the most common genetic polymorphisms in the world. This enzyme deficiency is present in about 8% of the world population and 36% among East Asians. It causes alcohol flush reaction, which include flushing, nausea, headache, and tachycardia. Antabuse, uh, which is, uh, uh, or disulfiram, works on similar mechanism, and this is used to help alcoholics stop drinking because they will feel lousy afterwards. Now, interestingly, the aldehyde dehydrogenase 2 polymorphism involving glutamic acid to lysine switch has been linked to increased risk of coronary artery disease, more severe outcomes after heart attack, a higher incidence of hypertension and cancer, and also increased uh, complications from type 2 uh, diabetes. So, for example, this slide shows that the aldehyde dehydrogenase enzyme deficiency has been well documented to be a risk factor for coronary artery disease and myocardial infarction among uh, East Asians, and as you can see here in Japanese men, Korean men, and, uh, and also Han Chinese. So this piqued my interest in terms of uh, trying to use race-specific iPS cells to model these uh, findings. So to model this, uh, we recruited 10 Stanford undergraduates